Hey everyone, my name is Lisa Ann, and in this video, we're going to be talking all about how to automate a lead magnet with a funnel. So if you don't have a lead magnet just yet, or even know what a lead magnet is, head on over to my last episode on how to grow your email list with an engaged audience. But like I said, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to automate your lead magnet with a funnel. So for those of you who are not familiar with a funnel, this is a mini website that basically mocks the path that your audience takes in order for them to convert from either just browsing on your website to actually buying, or maybe turning them from a prospect into an actual client. So the key here is that this is how the front end of your business can run on automation 24 seven, 365 days a year. This is also where we can put our prospects through a very specific process to collect contact information, to qualify leads, and even close your offer without ever talking to anyone. And connecting this back to your lead magnet, a sales funnel is where you will collect their contact information in order for you to send them that freebie. And then you can actually direct them down any path or any step that you want to, depending on your specific sales path. Now to build a funnel, you do not need to be a web designer. I wanted to put that out there right in the open. In fact, depending on what platform you actually use to build it, it can be a matter of a few clicks here and there, changing up a few words and publishing it to be live. It's not intense guys. Now I'm not gonna get too deep into sales funnels, but I wanted to make sure you knew how to actually connect it to your lead magnet to start this automation technique in your business. Now the platform that I use personally is ClickFunnels. So I've actually been using them for literally the moment I jumped into the online world. Now back then there wasn't as many options as you have now. And so the most common platforms that are used right now is ClickFunnels, there's lead pages, Kartra, Kajabi, maybe you have online courses with them. They are all great options, especially if you've never done this before. But for me and based on my experience and really how advanced I like to make my funnels, highly, highly recommend ClickFunnels. It is the most versatile. I personally found when I tried to use Kajabi or Kartra, it really limited me on my design aspect and also the length of my funnel. Especially since I'm not a coder, that one just really just limited me. But again, regardless of what platform you're actually gonna use, having a funnel design for your lead magnet is something that you're gonna wanna focus on. Now, if you don't have a platform just yet, I'll make sure to link it in the description below. I have a two week free trial I can share with you. That way you can go ahead and play around with ClickFunnels, set this all up for yourself. But first, let's get right into what you actually need to do. So let's think back to your lead magnet, okay? Are you doing a quiz? Are you doing a template, a download? Maybe it's a free guide, maybe a free recipe or free trial to your product. Let's say for this example that my lead magnet is a free download, let's say of a funnel that I'm giving you for ClickFunnels. Now remember, a lead magnet is designed to grab their attention, collect their contact information in exchange for that freebie. And the sole purpose is that you actually wanna start building that relationship with your potential client or customer. So in this example, in order for someone to get access to my download, they need to provide me with their name and then you provide me with their email. Now imagine this for a minute. You're scrolling through Facebook. Then you see a post from me and I'm saying, hey, I'm giving away something for free. You click on the link that's in my post to download that freebie, okay? But before you actually get access to the download, you have to put in your name in your email. And then there's a button that says submit, okay? That way I can send you an email to download it, right? I'm sure you've seen this before. And if you haven't, I bet you'll start to notice it a lot more often now that you understand actually how this all works. So on the back end, we actually need to build that URL that they click in the post in order to get, to get access to that lead magnet. So in order to download it. Now this initial page that they land on is something called a landing page. So a landing page is a standalone web page with the sole purpose of converting a visitor into a lead or even into a sale potentially. In our case, the landing page, we need to have an opt-in form where the visitors can put their name and their email address 
Again, as soon as they press submit, we're able to give them that lead magnet for free. So let's first of all talk about the structure of a good landing page. So this is a question I get asked all the time. So the typical layout, it doesn't need much. It doesn't need to be complex. It's going to have three things on it, a promise. So this contains the type of resource that you're giving away an explanation. So this answers why you made this and maybe even who it's for, and then a call to action. What should your visitors do next? AKA, how do they get access to your lead magnet? Tell them to click that submit button. Now, when you have this page set up, you're also going to want to make sure you create a thank you page. So that way, as soon as they enter in their name and email, it's automatically going to send them to a page where you say something along the lines of, thank you for downloading. Don't forget to check your email. I just sent it over to you. Pretty cool, right? Okay. But that's not all that we have to think about when you have your lead magnet created, you have your funnel so you can collect those emails. The next step and then actually a stage that a lot of people get stuck on is how do you get people to your funnel? The easiest answer I can give you is to post about it on social media. That's how you can get people to your funnel, get them requesting for access for your lead magnet for free. Now this is a slower approach to getting people to your funnel, but with any organic marketing, it's always going to be slower. Now, of course, depending on your budget, organic content, organic marketing is much better than doing nothing at all. But of course, I'm sure you can guess it. I am definitely going to recommend some paid advertising. It's a matter of putting your lead magnet in front of that exact person who needs it most. That is the power of paid advertising. If you're familiar with ads, this is where you want to run conversion ads. This type of ad aims to optimize that desired action that you want them to do. So in this case, we want them to become a lead. And what happens is Facebook starts to learn about every single person that becomes a lead. And as you collect data, your ads are going to start to perform better and better. Now I do have to point it out. You do need a Facebook pixel installed to run conversion ads correctly. So if you don't know what that is, I'll make sure to post a video in the descriptions. That way you can learn all about Facebook pixels as well. But in the meantime, your next best ad that you could run would be a traffic ad, meaning put this ad in front of people who are most likely to click on a link. I'll also make sure that I link down the video that I just did about all the different ad objectives. That way you can learn about all the different types of ads that you can run because there are very specific ones based on your goals. Now the next step, certainly not the last step, but I do want to bring it up now because it's a huge, huge automation piece for you. So think back for a minute. You've seen that post on Facebook. You've clicked that link. You landed on a page where it asks for your name and email. Then you click on that submit button. And now you have to check your email. But what happens if someone asks for your lead magnet and you're sleeping or you're playing with your kids or you're in a meeting or you're busy, the quicker you can get your prospect, the information that they want, the better. That's where something called an email autoresponder comes into play. This is the point where you can deliver your lead magnet to your visitor's email address on automation without doing anything. And actually you can follow up with them with a set of emails that you already wrote to turn them from that lead to a prospect and from that prospect to a sale. Now, my biggest tip with email marketing is that you don't want to bombard people. Seriously, you are going to annoy them. Don't be that person that sends a million emails all the time. So when setting up your email autoresponder, you're actually going to want to have a set plan on how you're going to nurture your email list. But the first priority is making sure that you can connect your autoresponder to your funnel. So it automatically sends out that first email with your lead magnet for you, no matter what you're doing, it will just run for you. The follow up, that's a whole other topic. And actually I will get into another video about that, but it's a whole other ball game. But the same thing with funnel platforms, there are so many autoresponders out there. I personally gone from Aweber to get response and now to active campaign. And as I learned more and more with automation techniques and email marketing, I want to give you some advice. I highly recommend you start with a platform that is a little bit more advanced. That way you can grow into it. 
as of course, as you in your business growth. First, doing what I did and having to start from scratch every single time that the platform didn't advance with me. So actually I'll leave in the description a trial with active campaign, but realistically, any email marketing platform that you're going to use is going to work as long as you're automating it for yourself. But let's go over some of the things that you've learned from this video, but also with your lead magnet and actually let's compare it to catching the mouse with a mouse trap. Okay. So a lead magnet is a free giveaway. It provides some type of information or some type of value. So first thing that you have to do is decide on what problem you want to solve and then how do you solve it? Then you're ready to actually create your lead magnet. Your lead magnet is going to be that cheese in the mousetrap. Now, in order to make the most of your lead magnet, you need a sales funnel. Now, part of a sales funnel is a landing page, so that front end page that you direct them from your post. Okay. So your landing page is an independent page from the rest of your website. And this is where people get access to your lead magnet. Think of your landing page as the actual mouse trap. Once you're able to entice that person, get them to take action, get their email address, get their name. Imagine the mouse trap capturing the mouse tail. Now in the actual configuration of a mouse trap, this component is actually called the hammer because the hammer drops. See, you learn something new every day. Anyways, in this rather unusual comparison, the hammer can represent the person giving in or them actually typing in their name, their email address and clicking on that submit button. That's the hammer. Now, usually when you've caught a mouse, you have to tend to it, right? Tending to it. What I mean by that is either disposing of it in some way, like throwing it out or maybe taking it outside and letting it go. If it actually survived, I realized that most mouse traps are designed to kill the mice. And while killing your prospect is obviously not the intention for a sales funnel, but making a killing with your sales funnel, that's the goal, right? <laughs> Anyways, I feel like this was a fun analogy. I hope you're following along, but when you catch that mouse, okay, you have to figure out what the heck to do with it. This is the same for the information that you've just collected. You've collected someone's name and you've collected someone's email address. Obviously that first email that person receives from you should be that lead magnet. You're giving them access to whatever they just opted in for. Now, remember we talked about that cheese, right? In addition to your lead magnet, you now have that ability to send more emails to that specific person in hopes to convert them from that prospect to the sale, right? So what's an analogy for that? Um, let's say it's actually closing the door after you have released the mouse, or maybe after you've thrown it out and you've tied up that garbage bag, that's going to be our analogy. Okay. Nothing is as powerful as getting someone to your funnel or getting someone to that place. You want them to take action when it's your website or a landing page that a prospect is just viewing their experience is dictated entirely by you. You can literally set the path that you want them to take, which means every single part of your sales funnel should be well thought out. And to be honest, we have just touched the surface of what a sales funnel can actually do for you in your business. But we're going to wrap it up there for you today. Thank you so much again for watching. I honestly appreciate it so much. I decided to start this channel to educate you and others on how to improve digital marketing. I have seen results after results and transformations with people and businesses just by sharing some of these small tidbits of knowledge that I'm sharing with you today in this video and all of my other videos. But in my opinion, if I can help one person with each video, that's a success for me. I'm happy. So if you feel like I've been able to help you, or maybe you feel like this information is valuable for someone else please feel free to share this information or even subscribe to my channel. That way you're the first to get notified if I post any other videos. But again, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.